Hello everyone, my name is Mohsin and today I'll be talking about LEAD. Uh, I know that my colleague has talked about it before in his previous videos, but I'll give him a short uh, introduction to LEAD. So basically a little about myself. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from McGill University. I majored in environmental sciences. My domain was uh, land surface processes and environmental change. Uh, you would say what domain is. It's a basic concentration within our environmental science major at McGill University. I'm a certified lead green associate. I hold a credential of lead green associate. Um, I got certified last year. And my interest includes sustainability, climate change, and environmental impact management including environmental impact assessment and case studies that talk about natural resources and uh, species restriction and climate change etc so let's come to the point so what is lead um, lead l-e-e-d stands for leadership in energy and environmental design it is an international rating criteria used uh, for green buildings it's uh, the certification in, that is acceptable internationally for green buildings um, and my colleague has talked about green buildings a lot i don't think i need to get into detail with that um, it is administered by u.s green building council uh, usgbc and it, the accreditation for lead uh, certified projects and professionals is given by GBCI that stands for Green Business Certification Inc. So a little bit of historical background behind lead. It all started back in 1993 when um, a scientist named Robert K. Watson from National Resources Defense Council along with his colleagues uh, started to work on green buildings and to find a standard criteria to rate the buildings according to the sustainability practices that are present in the current uh, situation and the buildings that will be feasible for the future and sustainable in future. So all the uh, efforts culminated in uh, the introduction of LEED version 1.0 in 1998 after a work of five years. Uh, in the initial stages, there were six volunteers that were working on this project. And now there's a network of more than 100,000 people around the globe that are associated with the US Green Building Council and LEED itself. Uh, the LEED versions, they have been um, evolving through time. It started with 1.0 and the recent one has been 4.1. Uh, I guess it was introduced back in 2009. So what is the purpose behind LEAD? The purpose basically is to have a shift in the practices that we use to design and construct the buildings. And that simply means to shift from traditional building practices towards more sustainable building practices. And what does it mean? Uh, the buildings should be designed in a way that is that protects environment, that guarantees uh, low maintenance costs, and that guarantees better health for humans and for the land itself. So how it can be summarized, uh, what is the bottom line? It's called the triple bottom line for a sustainable economy. And in the words, if you might say, it's if you take care of people, planet, and profit at the same time it will lead to a sustainable economy and that's what the goal behind lead is so before i talk about the benefits i would like to mention that lead uh, accreditation it's not compulsory as uh, a building code or any any what you might say any building code that is necessary for a project any standard that needs to be followed like ash ash in hvac systems those are the standards uh, you have to follow but there's no compulsory compulsion uh, in having lead certification it's just an additional benefit that might have in your building that will uh, make it green and better for the environment so those are the benefits basically behind having green buildings and having lead certification the benefits uh, for lead are basically twofold. Uh, one is the green building. You'll have a green building that will be better for the environment. And one is the 
process that goes behind a green building and that's called life cycle assessment approach and i just love this like life cycle assessment approach because i guess this is what uh, everybody needs to follow these days um, if you're living a normal lifestyle uh, like some people uh, use zero waste policy a lot they start from the very uh, start from themselves and then they have the idea of going upwards from just starting from one person and then it grows in quantity um, and goes up to the top like it starts from a person at basic level and it, if you're using a product recycling it the life cycle of the project product itself it becomes sustainable so that's basically the idea behind a green building it uses a life cycle assessment approach uh, including its materials, what kind of materials it is using, how the resources uh, that are used to make the building are managed like water and other natural resources, like you can say cement or any building materials that are being used. As you, as you might see in this uh, picture on the right side, it starts from the raw material extraction at the basic uh, end of the, as a, at the basic start of the project. And then from, processing to manufacturing and assembly product use and end of life it, that the end of life for our project project or building it's a building itself so all of these um, criteria so all of these processes that if you have followed we call it a life cycle assessment approach so at each stage you're following the sustainable practices and then it results into a green building and there are benefits in green buildings for us ourselves which include low site development costs if you're planning a site for better better site management and planning leads to low site maintenance costs and low site development costs and these low costs uh, resulting low, co low costs are true for water management energy material use and indoor environmental quality as well if you invest in start you yield the benefits later on in, in low maintenance costs. It also leads to healthier environment if you're taking care of sustainable material use, including the life cycle, because of the life cycle assessment approach. And it also, if you're uh, caring about the energy efficiency of the project, if you, that is taken care of, you, if you can have 30 to 50 percent reduction in energy use and that can also lead to low maintenance costs in future so if you have a healthier environment reduced maintenance costs you'll have a plus plus for future and that's what it makes sustainable that was make a, what makes a building sustainable and that's the idea behind lead accreditation so how does the project get lead certified so to be a LEED certified project, you have to earn a minimum number of points under a single rating system, which will make a project eligible for a certification. I will talk about the rating systems later on, but first we should uh, talk about the certifications themselves. So basically there are four uh, different levels of certifications that you might have, starting from certified to platinum. Platinum is the highest. and I don't think there are many platinum certified buildings around the world. You might find some many certified buildings that have uh, 40 to 49 points uh, from a given rating system. And then there's silver rating system, the silver um, certification that has 50 to 59 points from a given rating system, then gold from 60 to 79, and platinum has the most uh, more than 80 points. So along with the certification of projects, there is accreditation of professionals who are working on that project. You have to have projects who are certified to certify a building itself. So for that purpose, we have three tiers that work on a project. Uh, basically, Lead Green Associate and I, myself, that they normally don't work on a project, but they'll work be beside, uh, besides accredited professionals. That is the second tier. And accredited professionals uh, come from basic array of uh, rating systems. There are five types of accredited professionals. As you can uh, see the, 
in the image on the left side here, it says that you might have a credit professional for homes, for operations and maintenance, for building design and construction, neighborhood development, and um, indoor development and construction. And then after 10 years of experience that if uh, if an accredited professional has a ten, minimum 10 years of experience, it can be nominated to be a lead fellow that is the highest tier. So you can have training for a green associate and the AP, that's accredited professional, but you don't need a, a training for fellow. You just need a 10 year of experience in lead uh, industry, lead uh, sustainability. So how are basically um, lead rating system how they work you can have uh, ratings for healthcare projects new construction projects and old projects that are undergoing operations and maintenance you can have it for schools hospitality projects like uh, hotels restaurants and there can be a neighborhood development project like a housing scheme that is designed for the community living in that area and then there are retail projects that can get uh, that in that are including rating systems, including supermarkets, um, grocery stores. There are other kinds of rating systems as well. And it can be applied to many aspects of projects like tourism projects, uh, industrial projects. And the rating system for any project is uh, determined by 4060 rule, we call it. A 4060 rule is basically it's dependent on the area that is covered by any project. If a project uh, covers, let's say, 40% area is covered by a hospital building, then you can get it uh, LEED certified under healthcare project uh, rating system. And um, between 40 to 60% area, it's uh, the it's the decision of the accredited professional lead AP to decide if he or she wants to accredit this building uh, or project under healthcare system or not. But if more than 60% area is covered under a hospital building project, then it has to be uh, certified, accredited under the healthcare uh, rating system. So how to get credits for these uh, projects? Any project that has to get credits uh, has to follow two things, basically prerequisites and then credits. You have to satisfy prerequisites for any project to earn credits in these seven, uh, these the following seven areas, uh, you might say categories. And for each category, you can get a minimum of one point. You might have, you might be familiar with the first five ones from location and transport to indoor environmental quality. But the last two are uh, the new ones in here, innovation in design and regional priority. Innovation in design, it can get, it can be uh, achieved from any improvements in a project itself, any improvements made to, for the betterment of environment. And regional priority, it depends on how much the project is important for the region uh, in aspect to the above five categories, it can be uh, taken from any of them. Here's a checklist that is pro that is available on US Green Building Council website that uh, lists all the uh, categories and how much uh, credits you can get for each category. And it also lists, uh, lists some prerequisites. Uh, you can see they are marked as required, such as uh, construction activity pollution prevention in sustainable sites category and outdoor waste water use reduction in water efficiency category. And there's one uh, free point here uh, in innovation category for lead accredited professional. So any project can get this one point for free because all the projects that have to be get, have to get lead certification that project has a lead accredited professional working on on it. So you can get this one point easily and there are four points for regional priority. And you add up all those points and you uh, total them and how much the total is, it uh, equals to the certification you might be getting for the project uh, ranging from certified project to platinum project. So when you uh, complete this checklist, 
from USJBC, you can register your project online at www.gbci.org and complete the documentation and information required for the project at www.leadonline.com. There are uh, different softwares and tools uh, that are available on leadonline.com that can help you to complete the documentation and any information you might uh, have for the project and might require for the project uh, lead certification. So thank you for watching the video and I'm looking forward to your questions. You can post them in the comment section. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Bye.